thing because you know you're gonna go to go to cat man do she's like what are you, why are you, why are you stuttering i said i had to play a bob seeger song cat man do okay are we okay we just uh understand and stop I think because you know you're going to go to Korea. Yeah. 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 Let us look at the minutes of the last meeting. And uh, if anybody here has not had an opportunity to look at them all, uh, would like a, a, a couple of minutes. Be happy to oblige. Krista, that can stay open because uh, the scout troops come in. Nope. Motion to accept. All right. Second. Mm -hmm. All in favor. Aye. Aye. Okay. Let us look at. Okay. The uh, uh, the financials, the particularly the warrants. Oh, we're here. Hi. Hi. Hey, everybody. Hey, guys, there's plenty of seats around. Why don't you come sit over here? Hello again. Yeah. Hello. Hi. Good, good, good. So, uh, Steve. Um, Yes. I'd like to introduce you to members of Troop 526, uh, Girl Scout Troop 526. Uh, I think it would make sense to, I would recommend that at your meeting, you move up in the agenda. Maybe uh, I'm yeah, sure there's homework to do. do so, unless they'd like to stay for the entire meeting, which runs up until uh, Wednesday. Before, uh, <laughs> yes. uh, they would miss school. That's right. Welcome. <laughs> I hope uh, this is the first time you came here. I hope. Uh, uh, delighted to have you here and to uh, tell us about the project you're about to embark on. Uh, and do we have a spokesperson who is going to? Meanie, meanie. <laughs> <laughs> who has the backbone to get up and talk? You could all set up instead. Each other's slide. Oh, OK. Do you want to? <laughs> Probably the best thing, right? Either is come up here or go down there. Stick it right here so everybody can see, and I'll I'll see from a very tight angle, but I can see. So these are a few of the many things that we can put in the. Designs such as um, like pencils or pens, notebooks, rulers, and they would all be used for uh, students who are coming here to recruit and try to recruit. This here is also helps students academically. So learning and making it more easier than the library to allow people come and play here. Um, we would like to put it around the library when things is not Yes, thank you. So I'll just introduce you real quick. Um, that was your, your slides, right? Yes. This is uh, Julian Aptowitz, a member of the board. Fran Palumbo is our head of uh, instruction and research services. Steve Bard is the president of the board. And Nayana Meta is a member of the board as well. Hello, Mary. Hi, everybody. Girls, as a, as a suggestion, because I, I am a retired teacher and tutored in libraries for many, many years, please put protractors and, and compasses in there. <laughs> just because kids would show up for, I taught physics. So like, all right, let's measure the angle. I didn't bring my protractor. <laughs> and for our sake, uh, introduce yourselves, your names, and uh, you, uh, what, what university you're going to. <laughs> <laughs> what grade are you in, Rebecca? Eighth grade. All right. Um, my name is Isabella, and I'm also a and I just like I really want to go to Yale. Good luck. Um, I'm Jillian. I'm also a sixth grade class. 
It's okay. Oh, okay. Yeah. You guys are all elementary school students. Middle school. Eight. Middle school. Eight, actually. Eight. Yeah, I'm sorry. Middle school still, not not in high school. All right. Okay. Yeah. That's wonderful. I love the project. I, I think it's a great idea. We all think it's a great idea. We talked about it last meeting. And so what kind of box you guys are making in the wood box? Like I didn't hear what exactly is the box made out of. It is wood. Okay. So nobody can, if there are little kids around, they don't yeah. have access to it. It's going to be at an elevated place. Okay. Oh, is it? Okay. How many do, we, how many are you guys making? Three of them. Oh, that's a good number. And then we have any ideas of replenishing the material if they are done, like um, once they are finished? We're going to use building supplies for, us, uh, so for the first time, the initial one. And there are any ideas you guys have in place to replenish the material, like once they are over? Or we're thinking of young sheep taking over to, to you know, donate some more so we come back awesome awesome thank you and your target for delivery is was it august or yeah that's just great i love the idea and uh we know that uh, yeah, we know you guys are going to do a great job i know that Matt will help in any way that he can and uh see that you're happy to accomplish this and you're We'll be happy to see your work here helping other children. Right. You're not children. They don't look like children. <laughs> do we put a... Uh, yeah, you put another four years. Uh, like some kind of a donation box or place that we can donate? I know where they can get like 100 protractors and compasses. <laughs> <laughs> Just let me know. I have plenty, you know. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So I think that's a good point. Uh, Julian, is that we do have, you know, we do do a lot of collections here. So if you wanted to put something out, I'm sure we could coordinate that where someone could empty out. Mm -hmm. You know, they have a whole bunch of some retired, <laughs> teaching, some retired teachers, whoever, uh, to do that. So uh, that would be possible to help you keep your box. You know, the box is filled up with supplies. Yeah. 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 If you can see that where the space is, I, I always found, because I did a lot, you know, for, taught for 25 years. Uh, the wardrobe boxes that they make for moving make really good donation bins because you can kind of tape up the top and just leave the front slot open and then they can put things down into it. Oh, so, yeah. yeah, we great use idea. those a lot. Yeah, yeah, they're great. great idea. Well, Any other great. questions? Uh, no, I'm good. Thank else? you. But as an as a middle schoolers, it's a great yeah. uh, thing that you guys have so much thing, thinking and, you know, is this a silver or gold project? Silver. silver project. Well, good luck. Silver project, thank you. You as a group. Gotcha. Um, their gold projects will have to be done individually. Uh -huh. So each of the girls will be making their own boxes. That's the whole idea is to teach and learn how to use tools and my, do the project together. My father's. Oh, <laughs> is he a carpenter? We want to meet him. <laughs> we have and when you're things. done with that, I have some things <laughs> in my house. I never did develop the skills. <laughs> Steve yeah. did not win his silver award. <laughs> Thank you so much. And you are more than welcome to stay if you'd like to see what a meeting would look like. Uh, and if uh, I can't imagine you have, you still have homework to do? Mm -hmm. I didn't think so. I've got a, Isabel, I've got a granddaughter and his fellow who's about to graduate high school at Northport. So, you're ready to graduate eighth grade. So, wow. Your, your mom has a, Oh, eighth grade, so you got nine, oh, four more years before right. the whole empty nesting thing. And, oh. They may have reached success. Oh, okay. My first uh -huh. and she went from first grade through 12, and because of COVID, she had to do the gold award, but she sure. did bronze and silver. And Tracy, and I need a little help to push me along, and I was like, "Well, we can still, yeah, I know that's the first thing started, also." So I said, "Sure, I'll, I'll help along." So this will be my my second silver project because I'm thrilled with the girls. And ten years of well, I think it's wonderful. Up. I I so, was not, yeah, I was not a scout. Yeah, it's a great process to to see them go through. I, Both I, my daughters I I went through bronze and silver. So. Yeah, I grew up in the city, did not scout, 
I came here quite a few years ago, and my kids grew up here, and I think scouting is superb. Uh, I think the independence and the self-sufficiency that uh, that uh, are, are built up by uh, you know, organizations like the Scouts is just everybody should realize how important they are. So, Steve, how about a picture with the group? Yes, I think that's Brand. totally cool. So, why don't we go over here? We'll go in front of these wood carvings. It's beautiful. Who's on? I don't know. Just, yeah. No. Yeah, it's a local woodworking group. Drops, please. I usually have to warn them. Oh, no, no, they're good. They're good. Looking for a place to get rid of all that school stuff. Hey. My wife's been threatening me. She said, You're never going back to teaching. You're right. I'm never going back. Do you want me to lock that table? Yeah, that's okay. I won't lean forward on it. You know what? Let me just. It's got to be a switch, right? There you go. A little foot pedal. <laughs> we'll pass the word along to the customer. Thank you. Hope it's not going to one step. <laughs> <laughs> Back to the fun stuff now. Oh, yeah. Treasures report. Uh, da, 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 okay. Uh, there. Uh, we did the minutes. Uh, We've just asked about the we point. are on the wallet. Correct. Right. And I believe you have something you want to mention. Yeah. So um, the only addition to the warrant is that uh, today I received, or it was late last week, is after we had finished the warrant, we applied for a new credit card. Uh, Ralph had been bringing that up, that there were other cards out there that had better benefits. And so we applied and got one. Um, the Capital One Spark Business card. It's a lot like an Amex card where you have to pay the balance before the the due date. Oh, okay. And since it was new, I didn't realize the due date is June sixth, so it's going to be before our next meeting. So I'm adding on one thousand seven hundred and four dollars and ninety three cents. I'm requesting that to the warrant, um, and then we'll either figure out a check, we'll cut a check, and have someone come in and sign it or it'll be an ACH, we're not sure yet, but I just wanted to make sure that that was added to the board. And the things that are on there are the fee for the card, which we knew $150. There's um, some things like uh, bookmarks and posters to promote the library. 
from the American Library Association, and two, um, two sets of items for our summer reading club. We bought license plate frames and we bought um, luggage tags uh, that we're gonna give away as part of the prizes for the summer reading. So that's what made up those charges. So what, what difference you saw between this card and the card we had? This is 2% cash back. Okay. And uh, and you get a bonus now it's for up to a certain amount of buying at the beginning part. Understood. So Ralph was suggesting maybe we look at even paying bills with this card. Okay, yeah, some some part of the card, yeah. Yeah, and um, whereas the other card, we had a low interest rate, but nothing else, but we don't really, we always pay on time. Pay on time. So it didn't, it didn't make sense. Correct. Yeah. So we weren't getting any kind of rewards or anything from the other card. So we're, we're phasing that one out and we'll be using this one. Thank okay. you. Yeah. And paying bills, I suppose I have to give you clearly visible notice if they're surcharging on, a, uh, on, on an invoice. Correct. Right. We would be... So you'd know not to use that. Exactly. We would be talking about that before we would do it. Yeah. And then the other thing is we wouldn't pay it on the credit card till after the warrant. So you'd be approving it uh, and then we'd say to be paid so like right now you have ACH I got you. check and then there'd be credit card. So we just put that on the warrant how it yeah. was going to be paid. So okay. we're not quite there yet, but that's the, that would be the plan. Yeah. Yeah. I have a quick question, if you don't mind. Can I? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. um, I know that you know you always keep an eye, but I just wanted to um, ask you even then, we have a money market account currently. Is that uh, based upon the new interest rate? Right. So I... In the, my report, I talk about that. Oh, you do? Okay. Um, where Flushing Bank had come to us and offered. Yeah, I remember that. Uh, giving me the bank. Right, a 4.5% rate. Yeah. And um, Webster Bank is currently offering 3.4%. Okay. That right. just changed, I think, today. It went up to that today. Got it, got it. Because we have 1.5 million in there. And I know, even because for me also personally, the money market was like 0%. And I changed it. And now I'm getting 4%. Right. Just by changing the account. Okay. Right. So and then on one point five, like four point seven five is agreed. You're not dealing with a short term promotional rate either when you you made that switch, right? No, but anyway, money market is always an adjusting interest yeah. rate. So whatever yeah. is going on right now. It's more than but so even ours, if it's four percent on one point five, it's a lot of well, it's not four percent, let's just be clear. Yeah. Ours is maybe over ours is three point four percent. Yes. 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 And so the, there's reasons for that for governments mm -hmm. because A, they have to carry third, we ask them to carry third party collateral agreements, which costs money to do. Okay. So they have to they have to basically have a, an agreement with Bank of New York that says that all our money is covered by somebody else. So where the FDIC goes up to 250,000, this goes to the full amount that we have. So that costs some money. And then the other thing is that we don't get charged for any services. They use the balances to cover by cap keeping a minimum balance in there. Okay. So some of that comes out as well. So we're never going to get the same great rates that you get. In the personal level. Yeah, right. in a personal But level. even then 3.4, then instead of zero is a great yeah. percentage yes. on 1.5 million. It's yeah, a big and number. It's, it's a huge number. Yeah. Yes. Okay, thank you. Yeah. The only question I have about the warrant, Max, is just because I, I don't, I'm not, it doesn't matter that much, but. When I see like lines that say like program JV juvenile or program adult, some of them are obvious like green earth craft or some kind of crafting project. That's I could, some other them just have like a name, Hutchinson. I don't know what that means. That's the person's name. That's that, the person's name. That's who provided the was the the lecturer or the gotcha. presenter. Gotcha. Okay. And then not it, all of them are companies. Some gotcha. of them are just people. Gotcha. And then in terms of the the the, the variation, how do we? Like the like, some of them are like really inexpensive, like 150 bucks, and some of them are 800. I saw one for a thousand. Usually, those are bands. So bands. Yeah. So usually, the, as the number gets higher, it tends to be more people, but you're paying one person. So gotcha. um, that usually is to me a musical act of the ones, or there's a lot of instances of it. Gotcha. So for yeah. instance, that's Ms. what I figure is more like someone's coming every week, or you know, Miss Luckman uh, always has a fairly big check. She's here twice a week. Okay. Right. So she does the exercise class. Ah, that, okay. That right. Means... Some other people do uh, chair yoga. They might be here once a week. Gotcha. So they're, they have a frequency here that, you know. Yeah, just some of them are really obvious what it is. It's, uh, otherwise, I just didn't know what they were. So, yeah. okay. 
And if, if you really want to delve deeply or more deeper into it, just saying, in the Dropbox is all the backup for every bill. Okay. So you can bills. go in there and see gotcha. you know, okay. why someone's getting paid with their debt. Gotcha. All right. Yeah, and that's what we used to look at. Yeah. Or it was always clipped to the... To the yeah, to the... Yeah. Gotcha. All right. I was just curious because I couldn't. Yeah, I was like, I don't know what what Luckman means. <laughs> <laughs> right. I just have one more question. Uh, in the four thousand chart of account, there is yes. accounts payable. Yes. Auditor. We still are waiting on that. Well, no, the answer there yeah. is that essentially it's um, eighty nine thousand. It's kind of like a the accounting rounding era. Like it's something that they've used to kind of balance things for the since the beginning of our books. $90,000? You know, I, you know, maybe it was five here and seven there or whatever happened, but um, they're aware of it. And we're going to try to get a general ledger entry to try to clean that up at the end of this fiscal year. This fiscal year. And then they would decide where they're going to put it? Well, I'm hoping it just gets pulled out some in some way. Oh, wow. Hmm. But it's not owed well, it's a to anybody. Fee, so that's great. Yeah, it's not owed to anybody. It's not any, it's, it's just on paper. It's nothing. Right. Okay. It's not. Okay. It's a. It's a figment of. Uh, of Which is great. The we don't have to pay anybody ninety no. thousand. No. We don't owe anybody ninety thousand. We don't owe the account ninety thousand yeah. dollars. Nobody's owed anything. Okay. Good. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. Any more questions or comments? No. Thank you. If not, I'll entertain a motion to approve. So moved. Second. All in favor. Uh, Aye. Okay. Unanimous. Um. No general correspondence. Is that correct? Uh, no, I mean, I just, I included the one from the auditor in, in my my work, but that's fine. Okay. Uh, we're up to the report, and I think we'll... <laughs> <laughs> okay. So, everybody's been working on the strategic plan, and we're moving forward and learning a lot. Um, so along with our community, um, having more opportunities for the community gathering, um, we just finished up, Donna finished up with Hot Dog Filet, and the comments after the event were very positive. The following week, people came in and told us how wonderful it was, and even people who said they didn't make a lot of money appreciated the fact that the library did not charge for these spots and helped to create a really nice day. They enjoyed themselves and because they got to see people from the community that in a lot of places they hadn't seen in a really long time, it was just, it turned out great. You know, it's a great community event. I thought it was great. It was great. You know, we had a little chance of weather. It was a little windy, but everybody seemed to really enjoy themselves. So it was a real success. Um, overall, the vendors were pleased with the experience and they want more like this. They did say that they wished um, there was a little bit more advertising. So we had more buyers, but you know, it was our first one. And you know, yeah, we didn't really know how it was gonna go. Right. So like like I said, because of the weather, we had no idea. And um the majority of the people were super thrilled. Um in the in the event that we wanted to, well, we had to improve and increase outreach efforts. We have just renewed our teen volunteer summer event with the Hop Hog Barbers. Um, we haven't done that since um, COVID. Uh, that is where in the summer the teens come and they meet us at the Hop Hog Barbers and they help with the games for the senior citizen, the residents there, and they look forward to that. So we are going to start that again. Great. Um, Jill had some fantastic things going on this past month. Uh, in her strategic plan, she talked about um, two programs that she wanted to start, uh, a learning circle where parents and caregivers could come. It was called Gather and Grow, and it was for children from birth to preschool. And I believe you guys got that information, but I just wanted to tell you how great it was um, for her crunch time which was uh, an effort to have the students in the school have a place to do some study with time and you know quiet or collaborative, whichever they you know wanted to do. Um, we set aside three weekends between 12:30 and 4:30, 30, 
and um, they were able to meet their friends and we provide snacks and some, you know, some things for them to drink. And we put it out there. Um, Kathleen posted in a Hop Hog Moms. We got 85 likes, uh, comments like, love this idea, wish they had this when my kids went to school. Uh, beautiful, awesome, love with a heart. Got a lot of good feedback. In addition to that, um, in order to get anybody here in the first place, we reached out to Gary Campanelli. And Gary is the Director of Guidance and Student Outcomes in the entire district. He was thrilled. He said, thank you. And he shared it with the entire school teaching staff, as well as Parent Square and all of the uh, student body. So after that went out, um, we received some information from the IB teacher, who was Kelly Barry. And she said, this is fantastic. Can we offer this to my IB students as well? And Jill got right on that. And she got in touch with this teacher. She said that she would add them on her little thing that Gary sent out, and they were thrilled. Um, it was building a relationship. I mean, not, not a ton of kids came because it was the first time we did it, but we built a relationship with the high school, and um, it was a great idea. And it was important because the school knows that we want to be an advocate for the students, so it was great. That is awesome. Absolutely. The second program that Jill um, implemented was Gather and Grow, which was a fun program for the little kids. And um, by the second time she had it, she had seven children and eight adults show up. And it, there seems to be a need for this. Kudos to Jill. She had a bunch of people come this weekend um, and it was really wonderful. So um, when I went to the library conference, I met someone from Hot Dog who said, you know, I wish I can come to this program. My kid is little, but, you know, I work during the week. So I sent her out an email and I said, oh, by the way, this Saturday, blah, 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 Jill's, you know, having another one. And she showed up. She loved it. So, mm -hmm. you know, Jill, kudos to Jill. She did a great job. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Good proactive behavior on your part. So, well, I'm just saying, you know, yeah, great. coming up with great ideas. Um, I also noticed that um, the attendance has increased. Um, my seniors came this past Wednesday to Cinco de Mayo, and we had 43 people show up for the program. Um, the program that Krista ran, Judy is Italian Cucina, where they made their own pasta, the program was fully attended. Um, there was a kids' paint night, Constellation Painting, last Thursday at 6.30. The place was crowded, and our Friday morning programs are pretty full. That's the little kids that come in on Friday morning. So there seems to be an increase in attendance. Right. Um, Saturday story time, uh, the Rotary came and did a Rotary Reads on April 29th. Justin, who heads that Rotary, and it was very successful. So we had that the chair in the children's room. It was lovely. Um, this summer, the theme is going to be summer road trip. And I requested some tourism information from every state. We're getting a whole bunch of junk in. <laughs> so we, <laughs> we have a lot of stuff that we're going to start decorating with. In addition to that, this summer, uh, the Suffolk County Public Library Summer Tour. So um, this is sponsored by Suffolk uh, Libraries, and they're all participating, as far as I know. And they're going to have like a passport. A passport. Mm -hmm. So when you go to visit a library, each library is going to have their own passport, and this way. Um, depending on how many libraries they visit. So if they visit five, they, they can get this. If they visit 15, and it will go up to 25, and they'll get put in a raffle to win something nice for the summer. Well, the, the participant gets their passport stamped. Right. So you didn't say that. Oh, I'm sorry. So each library will have a stamp, and they'll stamp the right. passports. So. Oh, that's cute. cute. Yeah. Right. So we'll hand out the booklets, and we'll explain the program and how it works. And they'll get their booklet stamped. Um, they'll get a raffle. And when they hit a certain amount, and uh, it should be a lot of fun because then people get to see, you know, other libraries in the area. And we yeah. have a lot of great libraries in Suffolk. So mm -hmm. it's really beautiful. exciting. Just like Disney. Just, uh, <laughs> <Yeah. Christ. laughs> Just like Disney. Yep. Awesome. And, well, we, okay. and we started to work on our um, plan for the next year 
and we're very excited. We learned a lot this year and we're looking forward to next year. Mm -hmm. Item about the uh, tea market. Uh, in addition to most people saying a little more promotion, uh, there was a uh, comment or two about uh, better visibility, um, balloons or signs or what have you. Uh, did we not want to uh, have it uh, where we normally have people cross, like we would have the concerts in the summer? Or did we, did we decide not to do that? Did the landlord say, no, don't do it there? I, I don't know, Fran. Was that, were you in on those decisions about where to put the sellers for the flea? No. All right. So my understanding is that the idea was that we had a, a better spacer for safety reasons were part of the thing. Well, there is better. So the it other does, thing, that's good. Yeah. The other thing was that we had the, like the shredding truck and the, the, um, the library, the large library vehicle over there and the normal business of coming to the library. So we felt it would have been very disruptive to someone just coming to use the library to put it there. All right. But you really didn't know anything special was going on because it was hidden back here. So it's a decision to kind of. Right. So it could go either way, but um, it's challenging. Uh, it's, it's a challenge for sure. Yeah, I get that. Because even when we do the concert, we still have half the lot open where we don't close the whole parking lot when we do the big event, except for the um, trunk or tree. Right. No, I get the, I get the point. I think it's just something like that. But uh, if you really want a thousand more people, then it's a risk reward thing. That's exactly right. So. That's exactly right. Yeah. Okay. Can I say one more thing? I'm sorry. Yeah. So um, the staff work together to, um, to um, think about what they were gonna do in memory of Joan, yeah. Joan Neary. And um, they decided on a plaque and Matt was nice enough to have it just order it for us. Mm -hmm. And I just wanted to show it to you. Very nice. right. So we're gonna put it up in the adult reading area and some uh, mystery books, because that's what she liked. And it's going to be a lovely tribute to yeah. Joe. Yeah. So it's going on the slat wall, right? It is going on the slat wall. Right. Yes. So it kind of faces the um, study room. So there's a piece of slat wall there at the end of the big fiction collection. And that's where that'll be. Yes. Yeah, that's lovely. Yeah. I, I'm just curious that on the, uh, the uh, AP IB study session, was there any kind of uh, direction as to, you know, I, I don't know how it went in terms of the actual physical kids just sitting together or working together. That was So what we did was we had the entire teen area and we pretty much put it off and, and reserved it for the teens. Okay. Um, and we put the snacks right in that area, the rise area, so that people wouldn't just walk in, that they would know it was that area. And, you know, we asked them, are you here for, you know, studying? If it was tutors with students, we just let them do their own thing. Right. Um, the first weekend was just a couple here and a couple there. Um, and the second weekend, we had a few more. Yesterday was the day before Mother's Day, so we didn't have too many. Right. But also, like I said, it was the first time it was it was like a tester right. um, to try to get the teens involved and try to get the school to know that we're here. And considering that you know, we got, I mean, Gary even reached out to Jill afterwards to say, hey, how did it go? You know, which I thought was great. You know, we weren't just, yeah, I'll do this for you and forget it. Mm -hmm. it I thought it was terrific. So but she I'm did only thinking about job. the resources that we have available to us. There are, I mean, I know um, Cablevision uh, has a, has regions for views that are broadcast that you could, we could have those broadcast a big screen like this if kids wanted to come in together and watch it. Because they they do answer questions, they field questions from regents exams, et cetera, et cetera. I don't know if anything about the AP, but I, I know certainly for regents exams, that's uh, that's available. And it would be something that you know kids could come together to watch the regents review on earth science or or physics or whatever. I know the school has a lot of stuff too. Yeah. yeah. But it was just another you know since it was a couple of weeks before the test, Jill figured it would be a good yeah. time for them. And, you know, oh, sometimes it's, it's just really hard when you have. A family you can't find a quiet place or 
you know, mm -hmm. or if you're just struggling and you want a friend who's really got it and you wants some little, help. Little sisters. <laughs> right, right. Yeah. Yeah. But it was a great idea. And the fact that we got such positive, yeah, like you know, feedback, I thought, well, pretty well. Yeah, it a, you know, did a great job. Lot thing and it takes yeah, the oh, fact that the school officials kind of like into it, so they're, yeah, they're, they're great for that. Yeah, very meaningful. You know, students are, and he's a great guy. As, he really is nice. I don't know. To me, the important, most important thing, to be honest with you. They are great innovative ideas. Not seniors. Hmm? Not seniors. Hmm. <laughs> uh, nothing like it. It's just gotta, I need a break. Yeah. Knowing Kelly Berry, she is always open to new ideas. Yeah. So if you bring anything to her, even to support the community service for the APIB program, and if you take it to her, she will be very supportive. Yeah, she's right on it. Yeah. She, yeah. she got she's that, that kind of a person. Yeah. yeah. She's always looking like, you know, as if there is something. It was nice. But they are nice programs. I really like the energy that we have this year in the library. Like you guys are offering so many good programs, and people are trying to take advantage of it. Lovely energy. Love it. Thank you. All set, Frank? Yes. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thanks, Frank. Thank you, Bob. You really did all your hard work. Love that stuff. And you're right. And I I come in here fairly often. And it's much busier than I, you know, I've seen the years past, pre COVID years, of course. Mm -hmm. I should say. Yeah. All right. Um, under new business, uh, you're going to see the draft uh, action plan for the upcoming year uh, that uh, Fran just uh, talked about a little bit. So uh, they'll be very interested in your feedback for that. Uh, also, there's some operating budget adjustments under new business that we can uh, talk about then, um, just to make you aware of those. Uh, the key performance indicator. So I included like a new statistic report um, that's obviously much different than the one that you're used that you used to see. And I was wondering if you had any feedback on that, anything that you felt about the new, those new new numbers. Can you direct me to the page number? Well? Sure. It's starting from 19 looks like. Mm -hmm. uh, it starts, yeah, on 18. 18. 19. The graphs are very cool. Yeah. Makes it easy to quickly get the information you'd like. You feel like you get a sense of what the library is up to in these numbers? Mm -hmm. Five, six months, okay. Wow, that's nice. It looks like a fidelity graph over here. Yeah. <laughs> so from 2017, average of prior six months. So when we say the number of card holders, so these are like new card holders. Is that what it is? All no, card holders. Total card holders. So how do they come down? Like when somebody gives up the card? Right. Um, we also purge. There's a there's a standard purging process where if someone doesn't use the card for say three years, mm -hmm. uh, we will exit them out of the system. So there's moments when you'll have a large exodus. Okay. What happened during um, the pandemic was we auto renewed a lot of people. And I think finally, it just extended someone who yeah. probably had moved or wasn't yeah. here anymore. So to me, what this what specifically cardholder shows is we peaked um, it looks like 2019, 2020, we had, you know, our, our largest amount. Um, we need to do a, a, a library card campaign. You know, our, our number is really good. We're, we're higher than most libraries, which is we have roughly 67% of our community has a library card. Um, we serve 10,900 people. We have, you know, whatever we have, we're just under 6,750 cards, but it might be a good thing to, to do that again, to try to get back up to the 70%, 75% we used to be at. Mm -hmm. So three quarters to me is a much funner place to be at. Obviously you'd love a hundred percent, but you know, most libraries don't get even close to the heights that we're at. They're usually, usually somewhere hovering around 50% and they feel like they're doing a very good job. Huh. That's always been a unique feature of us is that we've have a lot of people who have our card. Yeah. We have great librarians. So. Right. That's right. So you don't have a campaign theme yet, right? You just a... No, we don't, Steve. But it's something that I think would be a good thing to do. I agree. Um, do you have Do you have number of new card holders? We can add that too, like as a different graph. We could. Yeah, we could certainly yeah. In show the card holders. This would be total, and then new for this year. 
Sure, yeah, we can add new card holders. And I could do similar, you know, the prior six, so you could see that. Yeah, you can put it in the same. Yep. Yeah. Thank you. Any other questions? No. Nope. I think it's you know, much easier to read than like pages of numbers that didn't, you know, oh, that would like didn't mean a lot because you can't really see the deltas and things like that. Right. Graphs make it such a better way. This is common sense stuff. So I think what will happen is, I, you know, when I've been reflecting on this document is I'll probably make it where it's basically one sheet and you can just have the graphics there, right? It'd be a little bit easier to read and not so extensive, but I want to just kind of lay it out really big and clear this time. Uh, okay. You mean by direct borrowing means borrowing of books, any kind of borrowing? No, direct okay. borrowing is um, specifically someone who's coming to the library and using a card that's not a HAPOG card. Oh, okay. Right? It's a direct borrowing says who are not HAPOG card holders. So that's right. And it could be any activity. That could be someone coming in and they're, they could be uh, checking out a book. They could be making a hold. Um, I think there was another transaction they could do as well. But, but, but the point there was, was this a reflection of our outreach to say the industrial park mm -hmm. is this a reflection on us attracting people who work in hot park mm -hmm. right mm -hmm. so if our direct borrowing is going up mm -hmm. that could show That's okay it. people are being attracted to the library from who aren't residents right. interestingly enough i saw a new doctor in hot park and she didn't know that we had a that we had a library in hot park and b that even though she doesn't live in hot park because her office is an hot bug, she could come to the library with her library card from wherever she is right. at. Run into that all the time. And she, right. she, she completely clueless that we had a library. And her office can't be more than <laughs> half a mile from me. Right. That that's, that's signage. Yeah, <laughs> that's right. All right. That's a lot of things, right? So the point would be that are we are we making that number larger, right? So are 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 we viewed as the branch for all the people that work here? Do people mm -hmm. feel that they can come in and do things? And while you know, the taking of physical material is not really our growth area. Um, it's something, mm -hmm. right? It's, it it's, it's my easiest way to show a barometer of that happening right. where people could be coming in here and photocopying, faxing, using the bathroom, getting on Wi-Fi, yeah. you know, sitting in a chair, using one of our public computers. All of that could be happening. Without that knowledge. But I don't, it's, it's harder modify. for me to count. Yeah, you can't. Yeah, you can't. It, it's you can't be that accurate. You have to right. imagine okay. So that's that's why this number is it's okay, but we might get we might find a better number. But he said you're going to be fine as best you can, and uh, and it will be really. I mean, I'm. It'll be really interesting to see if we can identify the major sources of out of district uh, uses of the library. If it's the industrial zone. Oh, uh, uh, certainly, if it's county employees or state employees, hmm. it tells me where to go for grants. <laughs> <laughs> so the so the uh, the reason the data kind of starts at 2020 is that's as far back as the data I had access to. Right. So it'll it'll that'll be kind of the genesis point. We've been collecting it for years, but it kind of falls off our system. So that was as far back as I could go. Correct. Correct. Yeah. This attendance ones is also very interesting. It would be interesting to see the Friday outs of the 2023. You beat that one. Right. <laughs> so that's cumulative though, right? That's that's, that's nine cumulative. events. Right. That's, yeah, of course. Right. So nine events total. Right. So that's oh, so you're that, adding it's you're adding people. Uh, okay. Right. So even then, right. It's nine event this year too, right? That's right. So it would be awesome if right. Do you know? Does this year's Friday out front? Do we push past fifteen hundred? Do we push? Do we get to close to two thousand? You know, yeah. obviously that's our goal. We want everything to be a home run. Yeah. Um, but we'll have to find out if there's some point where we're like, oh, it's about it for us. Like we're right. gonna. That's the thing we're gonna yeah. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. If we do three hundred people per, that's about our. You know, yeah. That's if you our, look at the trunk or treat numbers, it's like you know that just keeps going up over three years. Yeah. So. Right. So um yeah so. It, Figure it helps, right? Helps this Very thing. nice. I love it. Good. All right. Um, so again, if you're you know thinking about stuff at the library and you say, boy, I think this would help tell that story, or you, you feel like there's another piece of data that we you want me to display, I'm happy to, to work with it and share it. 
But when my reading of the key performance indicators you gave me as a document, these seem to match most to showing off those things. So that's why I thought that they were the best ones to show. The, the two KPIs you have was, if I just read the prior one was, one was the fundraising and the other was the high school. Well, but those were check. questions I had. You had, oh. Okay. I, I had about the ones you gave me, but there were 10 or 12 items that I'm responsible for based on the that sheet. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So if I look at my take of all of those was these tended to reflect a lot the two of, of them. Yeah. The ones that I read in the uh, minutes that you guys spoke about, one was... Right. We spoke about those two. Two. Okay. But obviously, they could be reflected in those, but those to me would be more reflected in that I report that I applied for a grant or okay. that I gotcha. went on a visit to somebody, right? Okay, gotcha. But to me, some of the other ones, you these would reflect those, right? Understood. Those other things. Yeah. yeah, it does. Thank you. Okay. Uh, Fran talked about the flea. I just included the statistics, uh, the, the survey that went out about that. So um, you can look at that package and, and see what they had to say. Um, I think it's definitely something to consider to do again. Um, and we'll take the criticism or the, you know, the things that work well and, and work with it to make it even a, a better event. I think it was all about the friends having better stuff to sell. That was my take. <laughs> better donations. I want a DVD. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, we want the big spend. I was not so, there at the flea market, <laughs> so I can't comment on that one. <laughs> All the millionaires are not this big. But, uh, and you know, the thing we talked about too is that uh, we had all hands on deck that day. We had almost every staff member here. And really, we don't need that many people. It could be done with a lot less folks. We don't have to roll out all the, every carpet that we own. Don't, it doesn't have to be unfurled. Um, it can be done in a much different way and much more efficiently um, and still have the same impact. So that's something we'll explore as well. Mm. It's possible that maybe even happens more often during the year. Maybe we don't just save it for once a year. We could have a flea two or three times a year. So if the interest was there. But we definitely have to work with <laughs> the landlord about that. Yeah. I think just the, the, you know, the idea of really advertising it, you know, for like this one event every every spring we're going to have this yeah spring cleaning come out take out your stuff it's uh you know it could be a nice event we have let's we already have like the the trunk or treat in october and they're just trying to think about when we space out these big community events right that's our thing once a quarter yeah that's what we are shooting for good right yeah i think that's great and and at some point if you, if you do wind up you know in an area where you need permission from the landlord and you get some resistance yeah, that's why I ask questions about the courtyard. Yeah, that we may have a swap item there. So, uh, bullet aid um, was part of the budget. So uh, that was announced earlier last week. So I got in our letters to our assemblyman and senator asking for support of some projects. So we'll have to wait and see what that turns up. Uh, typically, they like to give to the library. Um, because of the fact that we serve everybody um, and the schools got a very large amount this year. Um, so we tend to be a safe bet that a lot of people don't complain about uh, when they when they write those checks. So hopefully we'll be part of their part of their numbers. Uh, that's the next thing is about bank rates. Uh, we talked about that a little a bit during the financial report. I'm advocating not to change. I think we have a very good relationship with Webster and they take care of us very well. I know it's you know a sizable percent difference to give up, but there's no guarantee that that percentage change is going to last. So I don't know what you want me to do. So Webster Bank isn't giving you, if you open up a different account, just move money from A to B, they're not offering you a higher interest because on 1.5%, even if it is 3%, it's a big number. Right. So they might be offering some scheme because they're what not. banks are offering that? Really? Yeah. Wow. No, I reached out and I said, you know, what could we do? And they said that this is the best we do is 3.4. Okay. So currently we are getting 3.4 yes. as a savings account. On the money markets. Money market, we are getting 2.4. Yes. Okay, gotcha. Okay. Right. 
I agree. You don't. Then it's okay. Don't change it. Yep. You don't okay. change promotional rates. Just more points you put on that. So. Okay. Julian, you're good with that. I agree. Yeah. Okay. I mean, if you're comfortable with your banker, that's. Yeah, yeah they're great to us. They yeah. are really good, and it's a team we work with for since we were with Capital One. So uh, they've they've been moving around, and and so it's good. All right. I take that back. I thought we were we were still on the zero percent. No, we changed it to three point four. No, yeah. no, we got yeah, we changed all that up. Yep. Okay. Uh, let's see. Uh, the Long Island. Uh, I'm sorry. Hop Hog Industrial Association Trade Show is going to be on May 25th. Um, Krista and I are going to attend um, in an effort to, to work on our outreach. I'm certainly going to talk to the folks at HIA about membership, about the library joining um, the HIA, uh, and just to get a lay of the land for, for that, those comments about, about us being a branch. You know, how do they feel it would be best to talk to their employees about where they work, about coming in, and such like that. So um, I've never been to that show, so I'm excited to go. Um, I know, Fran, you've attended in the past. I haven't. I was I wanted to go. Oh. But um, I haven't. It's a good thing. Yeah, it's I thought you had attended. Yeah. I'm sorry. Um, so we'll go and see what that's like um, and check that out. Uh, Fran brought up our summer reading. So uh, look out for the newsletter. should be coming to you shortly. Uh, we're just finalizing some of the, the pieces there. We have our T-shirts are on order, our... Um, uh, prizes are being ordered, water bottles are ordered. So all the stuff we're going to be giving away as incentives or have been ordered. And I think we're just finishing up some of the odds and sods to, to make it all make it all work out. It will be, work out. be exciting. It will be. Uh, thanks to the friends for the National Library Worker Day luncheon, which was on Tuesday, April 25th, so celebrating National Library Worker Day during National Library Week. Uh, it was delicious, I'm told. I could not be here that day. Um, but, uh, and John stopped by with cookies. So that was <laughs> nice. Um, if you're interested, we are having a CPR AED class on June 20th from 10 to 1230 here at the library. So if anyone wants to take that um, training, let me know and you're welcome to come. Hmm. And uh, we have a certain number of slots we have to fill. Um, this one tends to be the, the busier one. We tend to have more staff that go to this one, but we can make room for you. Uh, code of ethics policy, please take care of that for me. I don't think I have any for this year, so you all need to fill out that form for me. Um, that would be great. Any questions about the auditor engagement letter? Okay, so I'll execute that. You really have already approved that at your reorganization meeting in July, but I do like to show it to you again, just in case there's any questions. Um, the state of libraries report. Always an interesting read um, to kind of get a lay of the land about what's happening out there um, in the greater library world. Obviously, the number one topic in our profession these days is intellectual freedom. So, um, you know, there's uh, when I go to the American Library Association conference at the end of next month, there's going to be a, a rally for the right to read. Um, obviously, you have uh, you have these days now. You have a lot of work towards protecting people's ability to read. Um, the statistics are kind of frightening for the amount of challenges that are coming up to the books and the reasons why. I personally am making a commitment to read all 13 of the most challenged books. I just started I just started today. Um, so just so I can have a sense of what people are finding that's objectionable in there. Um, you know, it's just interesting to try to, to read the, the literature that people are talking about. Um, and uh, most of them are on Overdrive, which are on Libby, which is nice. Oh. I'll listen to them. Mm. That's how I tend to read in. Oh, I had to get through some other, I always do audiobooks. But uh, so anyway, um, if there are any questions, maybe that's something for general discussion we can talk about during then about that yeah, report. Good idea. Um, Long Island Library Conference uh, was last, this past Thursday at the Melville Marriott. It was very nice to, to be in person. They had canceled it for a few years. Um, and it was good to see vendors and our colleagues around. So it was a well-attended show. And uh, Fran, I thought you thought you had a good time. I thought it was great. I thought the presenters were very good this year. Yeah. I heard some very good ones too. A, good, a lady from Brooklyn talking about statistics. Some of our local folks talking about technology trends. Um, what did you go to, Fran, that you liked? 
I went to the one about um, seniors, and um, that was amazing. That was really great. Um, and I went to the one about Brentwood that I was telling you about, where the um, schools are working with Stony Brook University and trying to get these kids to be prepared to be freshmen, um, because ever since COVID, right, they are really a couple of grades behind, and then they go to college. The college will expect a certain yeah. standard, and they're not really, you know, getting Up to, to scratch, that standard. Right? That's correct. And that was a great program. They had great ideas, and they want to incorporate public libraries to help out too. So that was really exciting. Yep. And then the last one, um, I thought it was going to be something that was going to be, it started out good, but in the kind of, so. We'll leave that one alone. Then. Yeah. <laughs> we don't want to share that on YouTube, right? Right. So, uh, I wasn't the one giving by that kind of poem. No, no. But I, well, in general, th there was a lot of things, you know, like when you read the booklet and you're like, oh, I'd love to go to this one. Now, I have to say it was hard really deciding this year. They had some really good things. Yeah. Thank, Thank you for Fran. letting us go. The uh, next thing is about outdoor signage. So I know a few of you commented about that uh, on email, but um, I didn't get enough of you. So I'm really looking for a direction to go in as far as uh, this project goes. So really the proposal in front of us is to ask the landlord for us to join them on their sign. Um, and I wasn't sure what you thought about that look or... Well, you know, my, my feedback on that was since the correct building name is considerably shorter, uh, uh, takes up less, need, doesn't need as much space on the sign, I thought perhaps there would be a way of, of increasing the visibility of the public library element. And if they made the change you're suggesting, which they need to do and and then see how an artist might do something with the bottom half that would give us uh, a better look at it's a library you know that was my comment um, I'm not you know well my wife and I showed my wife the designs and hers was exactly the same thing like the word hot pocket is the biggest word and she wanted to see library is the biggest word right so. And I think we talked about that, but yeah. I, I didn't get that note to Dan mm -hmm. soon enough. So yeah. that's one I can make from that. So are they letting us uh, use their space to put up a public library there? No, they're not. Time? They're not, right? So not yet. We haven't asked. Oh, we, oh. So yeah. what we're trying to do now is decide, do you like this approach to our outdoor signage question? And then when I have the thing that you all like, on paper, then, to... then I'll go to the landlord. Right. I have my doubts whether you would agree to it. That's because, okay. Yeah. That's because okay. He, has to, oh. he, can, he can decline. He has to give a reasonable reason for declining. The probability will be high. I the lease today when I read the lease. So, uh, uh, but, you know, you just wait and see. And, and then we can't you... have our own. Like, you know, if he says, okay, you have your own, you know, don't use my space because that is an advertisement for him. Right? So we are taking his space away. Well, then then the question would be that we would then like our own. So now it's, do they want another sign on the property? And then we then they're going to have to help co-sign on an application and we're going to ask to go in front of the planning department and all the, you know. Oh, so then it's all that. Thing. Oh, right. okay, gotcha. So okay. we're saying we think that you have the best location. You have the best location on the site. It's not adding another something. Mm -hmm. The cleanest solution would be: Can we get on your side? Can we can we ask for that real estate? And since we're going to be here another twenty five years, yeah, even if it's just a small thing, it's public library. You know, like yeah, I was driving through uh, East Northport. Yeah, or and you can have the same thing above. East Northport's library is kind of off of a beaten path. And there's just one sign. It's like driving, you know, driving up uh, Larkfield. And there's a sign that says public library with an arrow, like towards the direction. <laughs> but I never saw the library. But it's been there so long that everybody knows, even I know where that library is. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's the thing. Yeah. But, uh, unless they give us the same space and we might say, can you put above this, like, same kind, just make that. It looks like a fireplace, just make it bigger. 
right? The same fireplace, you can have it bigger. Well, that would be, you know, obviously you know, an issue with the to town. Be. That might be a town limitation. Like they've gotten this approved. You know, I don't know if tomorrow, if they said, yeah, you can put your name up there. Can someone just walk in and change it? Or does all of it have to go back to the town? You know, I don't know. Okay. But your vendors hope to know all that. Yes. And it certainly would. knows who to talk to. Yes. Right. Yeah. But, but I definitely agree with Julian that, you know, the public library, Yahapag is visible, which is, it looks beautiful. It's beautiful. But, you know, we want to say library more than Yahapag. Right. right. And you want to do that all before election day. <laughs> Okay, so, but let, let's just run through what the questions are in front of us. One is, do we like the strategy of <clears throat> fixing this to say yeah. library bigger, but we like the concept of these signs. We want to try to push our way onto these signs. Yeah. yeah. It gets the least Absolutely. expensive and probably best for us. Best visibility, right? Because yeah, they're exactly. lit at night, right. all exactly. the rest, right? Exactly. Okay, so that's one. Okay, so then, and that path will be, I'll reach back out to the Simons and ask them to clean it up um, and then uh, and change it and all the rest. Um, and and we, then, we, we would pay for any of the lighting that would go for our, in other words. Uh, yeah, whatever we're I asking. I don't know if that's interior lead or, or exterior lead. It's exterior lead. Oh, okay. Yeah, that's exterior lead. Yeah, we, we would have to pay for Whatever, whatever modifications is going yeah. to be on us. Yeah. I like the black and white one more because the wh white kind of shows how far right away. It's just my thought. So of the two, you like the first one? The I don't know. This is a black on matrix and white is the half -hour. The other design is very good. This design is very good. But it's all black. But over here, the visibility is there, I think. Right. Okay. So... Well, how does everyone else feel? Do you like the contrast or the one where it's all the same color? Whatever the market, to me, whatever the marketers say is the most visible, and especially with a quick glance on the highway. Uh, and, you know, ad agencies say no, that stuff. Okay. I think it's going to go down to the look that the landlord's comfortable with. Oh, really? Yeah. yeah. We don't want to, we, we want to get his cooperation as best we can. And uh, so if it, the more it matches what he currently has. That, you know, I think we can show both, right? And say, you know, we just wanted to show two options, but you know, what do you think? Yeah, it's great to show them, but then they get to control, right? They might say, Oh, that looks nice, maybe we'll make our sign white too, yeah. you know. The white looks better, <laughs> but you know, who knows? Maybe the guy just likes that, that look. So, anyway, yeah, um, okay. we'll figure that out. And now, so let's say that goes through and they're just they can't believe we haven't asked by this point and they're so happy to go through with it um, and we move that forward. The next question is, do we want to press for other outdoor signage? So that would be those two corners. That's what I would be asking for, right? So here at the driveway and over here at Vets and Spartan. Do we want to try to push the town to change the, that could all come down and be changed. We could also ask to have letters on the um, awning outside yeah. the front door. That is important. Do we want to have something that says library enter or library entrance, entrance or yeah. something? Uh, I think it would make sense. I mean, it's, uh, it's obvious that it's different than the rest of the other buildings, but it doesn't really mean much other than it's blue, you know? Yeah. yeah. No, we definitely need a sign there because, you know, yeah, where's the library? Like, you know, there's so many things over their hands. I don't think we, anybody would know that the library is out here. So well, like I said, sign I, over there is first great. time I met this doctor and her office is like, you know, if, if you go on yeah. town line and you know where those building, office building is, right? right town yeah. line and I, I said, I had no idea you had a library in town. Like, like literally <laughs> half a mile from here. Yeah. Harper Tree is where I first ran into that. I'm surprised he has, a, he has a problem with having a library signage on near the office. It's not, it's never it's, asked. No, no, it's, it's not the landlord. It's, it's the, the town. town. It's part of a covenant that this property has about its signage, the signage that's allowed. That's the issue. So it's a restriction from whatever happened back whenever it happened. When they built these. So we're, 
Dan Simon's belief, sine wave's belief, is that we have enough juice and being a public entity, they never envisioned a public Having library being in this kind of building. So we're kind of a weird case for them. And so he thinks we could have a case to go forward and say, listen, you've allowed public libraries all throughout Islip to do this and this and this and this and that. Let us do something too, because wow. we're a different use and blah, blah, blah. And they're going to say, well, oh, the covenant. And we're going to say, oh, well, we're, we're who we are. Okay. And it's tasteful. And right. Anything we're asking for is tasteful. It's not the Trinicott Nathan sign. Right? Yeah, we didn't. On 27. We, were, we rejected the blinking neon. It drives people there yeah. nuts. So yeah, that, that's amazing, that sign. Yeah. It is amazing, right? And lots of people, whatever, that sign is there. But we're looking yeah. for something else. <laughs> and so, um, again, but you'd want to pursue those other options as well. So, but mainly just on the awning. That's a big thing. I think awning is good. And of course, as much yeah. as you can on the street, I would prefer one even near that fountain. Well, they don't have a sign near the fountain. And right. But uh, wherever they have signs, wherever we I can put, if he's giving us permission, I think. I like the awning that. idea. Uh, I, I don't see the point in changing the uh, name on the building itself. So, the big word, the big library on the yeah. top. Yeah. yeah, I don't think we need to change that. But, it's but I do think the awning it, would be would oh, be help people the once, they, once they once they pull into the parking lot, they can see. Oh, that's the exactly. right. Awning can be made to look like a a, a high class hotel. You know, it's uh, it can be very tastefully done. So I don't know if you can put on the roof like that, like library, so you can see it when you're driving. Is that allowed? Like apparently, that whole sign that says library is not allowed. That's what the, they, allowed, he said right? when he turned his presentation right. that that was not. That was the best thing. <laughs> well, you know, they're, they're not uh, irrational people, and it's not a petty. Thing. No, they're not going to play. They're not petty power people. They're they're trying. To, they're going to try to do the right thing. And this is a very powerful case. That the, the what we're point, asking for is the right thing. The whole point is coming at them with a story, right? And we haven't yet. That's really all it is. Yeah. We have not put a case together. I think Dan is the right emissary to put it all together and help tell that story and present it to them. Sure. But step one is to work with the landlord to get this to get this going. So okay. yeah. So looking at the library like that, I'm just looking at the picture on page uh this is 57 or something. Okay. okay. If you look at that, if you're looking at the library from outside, right, behind the sign, the matrix and hapa, mm -hmm. even if we put library on top where that car is standing and on that thing, are we allowed to do that? On the roof? Like well, the one that's it does say it there. This is an old picture. He pulled oh. he pulled an ancient picture because it's not called matrix anymore. It's called crossroads. So that was one of my comments was that this this is a okay. this is some old Google image he picked. So, so right now it's blue, right? What we have that the one that comes right. Through. So where that car is, what you're looking at, there is a there is an awning there. Mm -hmm. And then over next to the numbers, it says library on the side of the building. So right, right here it says library okay. on the face. It's not there. Okay, gotcha. Okay. Okay, you don't have that in this picture. Okay. That's well, fine. Dan didn't put it in his picture. Okay. I'll say that. Okay. So All right. Next. All right. So let me get back to my page. Well, we're done with the report, right? No. Next. Don't rush me. Well, <laughs> I'll be there yet. <laughs> Um, just want to talk about the minimum wage changes. Um, oh, yeah. So that was part of the new budget. Um, we are impacted slightly since we just adopted, well, the, the community just approved a budget and, and we thank them very much for voting to do so. Um, it did not incorporate that change. So um, our, our minimum wage is still set at $15. Our, our entry salary obviously starting January 1st in 2024 it's going to go up a dollar to $16. Now, right before then, I would suggest that we adjust the, the four people currently's salary to $16. And then as we're working on next year's budget, we can address that change and the, then the next one. 2025, yeah. Right, which would now change everything a dollar fifty, 
as part of that budget yeah. process. And then we'd be prepared for it going Catch forward. Yeah. Right. So okay. we typically what we've done is because that presses up from the bottom, it makes some people's salaries get a little bit close. Yeah, which happens. So. And we're not respecting the kind of the steps in the chart. It'll be for six months and then it'll get straightened out okay. hopefully uh, after that. So that would be my suggestion for getting through this first one, because it did happen after we right. had kind of answered a lot of questions. So comments. I think it's I'm good. Solid, plan. Yeah. solid plan. Can you be communicating at this to the staff so they understand? Yes. Okay. Yeah. When it comes time, certainly. Okay. Yeah. All right. Um, I included the results of the staff health, safety, and wellness survey. Mm -hmm. So um, I don't know if you had any comments about about those results. Mm. So no, it's uh, it pretty much. Go ahead. No, it's okay. No, I did that. <laughs> the stress level has increased. That's what I read. Okay. <laughs> well, no, it stayed pretty much the same. People's feeling yeah. of stress. Actually, yeah. it's gone. The high stress or frequently stressed has gone down a little bit. Actually. Yeah. That's good. Okay, so the strategic plan is helping. Oh, these, these like the big events are helping, huh? To bring the stress down. That's a good thing. Any any root any idea the root cause of a somewhat of a decrease in the, in the stress factor? I think that it's post COVID. Post COVID. I mean, yeah, I, it's so got to be right. part of the reason. Um, yeah, sure. I, I think when you read through the comments, it's a lot more about the work than about themselves right so right. i think that's got to help that things where sense. you feel a little more like you can focus on your job and you're not worried that you're going to be sick right yeah, and, so yeah. that's maslov right that you're moving up yeah well more challenging work more stressful work yeah right you're absolutely right right okay. um so i have not presented this to the the, the full-time staff yet we'll talk about it on wednesday at their meeting um, so they haven't really seen the results. I'm not saying that to keep keep you in the dark, Fran, or anything. But the point is, is that I don't have answers on how we're going to address some of these things yet. So the, the, we just I just finished the survey last week, and um, you know we'll have a chance to start to respond to what was brought up. Do you think we? Is there anything that you think we need to address over here right now? Mm -hmm. I don't think so. I think uh, most of it. Um, honestly, I think most of it's very good. I think that, yeah, yeah, you know, that there's generally a very good feeling in the library. I think the, the number of respondents we had was excellent. Um, and I think that there's people are talking to us, right? There's a lot of people who took the time to write responses and that's wonderful. Yeah, that was wonderful. Yeah. So they might be upset about an aspect of their work or they wish this or they wish that perfect. And that gives us things to actually work on. Mm -hmm. Um, it's interesting when you get someone, I, I looked, I can see like how someone answers a question. I don't know who it is, but I can see all their other answers. So someone said that they would not recommend this as a place to work. They gave us a one mm -hmm. out of 10, which is terrible. And then, but when the time came to say, how can we make your work better? Nothing. So that person's not, you know, that, that's that's someone who doesn't want their work to be better or or either misread the question or, you yeah, know, possibly. or they need to get a lawyer or whatever. Right. <laughs> so the fact is that some people are unhappy and they don't want to make it better or help. And that's what you're up against with any place. But a lot of people who felt like our places needs work or the rest were telling us that and happy to help us. And that to me is is wonderful. Mm -hmm. So uh, we'll take it from there. And I do see now that you have even the other item, which is the, which is the copy. Of yeah, just the copy release. Um, so that's coming up, and I have the new lease to go. Um, and I'm recommending that we, we just go forward with it. So it's going to work out for us fairly well. And that'll give a new machine for the staff uh, area. It'll include a stapler finisher, uh, which we don't have yet. So it'll automatically staple your papers, Frank. Nice. That'd be nice, right? Um, and this machine out here will stay the same because it doesn't really get a lot of use at all. So, and that is my report. Thank you very much. Welcome.
Uh, okay, now we go to, we don't have a committee report. Um, nothing that isn't specified later under old business. Uh, new business, we can look at the, well, you might want to knock off the operating budget adjustment, get, get that done. Uh, you've got some tech, technical uh, yeah, the, exactly. Um, what I haven't done this the last few years is to like move the money around, like, you know, put six dollars there and take seven dollars from there and all the rest to make the lines budget out to, to even out. You look at it every month. I look at it every month. I did the math and basically we're going to come out pretty close to zero. You know, um, really, we, we had a little bit more income than we expected. Um, we spent a few bucks here extra here and a few less there and and really at the end of the day i think it just it's it's pretty close to even at the end and it's not really worth doing that exercise if something was really off and i felt like you had to address it or there was some major problem i would say yes we should be transferring money or doing something there's really no reason to these adjustments are um recommendations from the auditor and what it basically will do is have them charge us less to do the audit because if they have to go through to to manage a lease in their reporting it takes a lot of time and that's what this gets rid of so rental payments or whatever it's called and then uh copier payments or whatever the word lease comes out and then they can kind of blindly say oh that must not be a lease and then they don't have to do certain computations in the gaspy requirements that's why we're doing it Sounds like a powerful lawsuit. <laughs> right. So that this came from Ted and uh, Bulbasar and Coster to make our um, our uh, auditing process go quicker. Okay. So, okay. So he changed from ink and toner to copier payment. Just switch to the. Yeah. His suggestion was to pull that out and make it a new line, so it's separate, mm -hmm. and call it right. Copier payment. Copier payment. Okay. Do you need anything other than? Uh... A formal approval here? No, know? it should be a formal motion still. Okay. Uh, do we want to discuss this further? Any questions about this? And if not, I'll entertain a motion. Yeah, and Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. Um, okay, now we're looking at the draft action plan. Yes. Uh, oh, which number is that? Which last is one, fascinating. Right? The first of July to June. Really yes, yeah, this is yeah, sixty-four. Yes. I love oh, it. 60. And here's a. Uh, I just have some definitional questions. Well, not just definitional questions. We talk about. Uh, 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 community organizations or, or community events reporting. What do we mean by community? Do we mean, I mean, do we just mean our, our library taxing district? Or do we mean more than that? Or I mean, because obviously we include off site data for some reasons. I just don't know how we're going to deal with this here. Do you want to answer, Frank? You would like me to. Okay. So back when we wrote the strategic plan and we, this was, you know, over a year ago, year and a, year and a few months ago, um, we did a whole statistical analysis of our area, right? We took all the data we could find. And our definition of community was all the different aspects of life where people are getting together outside of the home and outside of work. Right, so ecumenical, sports, service, um, hobbies, you know, medical, right. entertainment. And that's a non-responsive definition for you to be what I'm talking about. No, I am getting there. Yeah. I'm getting there. And, and, but really geographic based, geographic to who, who lives here, what are they using? Okay. Cool. So while... We, we could identify, and I'm just speculating, that there could be a group of people who go to the same church in Brentwood, 
-hmm. Now, would maybe we want to then work with that church in Brentwood because they're serving our folks. Sure. So, so we're not limiting it necessarily geographically, so, but, but we would start geographically. So Hot Pucks, the soccer club, club yeah. might have kids that go to Smithtown schools. Yeah, That's right. fine. Absolutely. Ready made for us, given the fact that our high school is a two township high school. Right. So the fact is we're going to have folks where we're going to be talking to someone who's not in our district, and we're okay with that. Um, which is why we go back to why we're going to measure direct borrowing, right? Because we know we're going to be reaching people who have cards other places. So. Yeah, that is, hmm. but, yeah. Pretty uh, robust, like the expanding the SMS communications. That's going to be something. We've seen some good examples at Central Islip is doing it in a big way. Uh -huh. And how are they finding it? Well, I, we haven't, we just see that they're doing it. Okay. So, um, but they have a methodology where they're sending out things like, hey, go to today's sign up day. You know, they're yeah. sending out these messages that are pretty, pretty good marketing, yes. you know, pretty good advertising that I think, you know, we yeah. need to look at. There's a technology over there that yeah. sends out, like, even if you're registered, then, you know, the day before you can sign out tomorrow, you're registered for this. Are you going to be there? Right. Oh. Yeah, like a confirmation systems, like for any kind of doctor's office, right? What are those systems look like? How do we yeah. get those? Yeah, because the the phone is everything. You know, I think people are. Yeah. That's how they want to communicate. Yeah. Yes. So, okay. uh, Julian, anything? I no. Have, I have a. Well, you're talking about database of community organizations, um, which is great. Uh, is that data going to be confined to the library per se? Is it something that the friends could access? Because the friends are looking for ways to communicate through platforms that go beyond this very limited list of uh, people who are paid five dollars or whatever. Right. Um, <clears throat> I I think that's a discussion to be had. Um, you know, what happens with that data? Um, does it become some public? Do we strip out some things and make it available? It could be a question we ask those organizations. Would you like to be part of a, I don't, uh, like a directory that could be made public? Yeah, in a way, you know, they, so many people don't see the difference, understand the difference between friends and library that they probably wouldn't some of them wouldn't understand why the question well, might even be. I wouldn't ask that question, Steve. Mine yeah. would be the, if the library were to collect all this data and would it be helpful to you to be part of a directory right. so that anyone who walked in and said, hey, I'm interested in my child playing lacrosse, I hand them your contact information or a, an email address. Are you good with that? Right. And I and understand that, and I agree wholeheartedly. So that to me would be the larger question than just one group's Absolutely use. Absolutely not understood. Yeah. Okay. Uh, and this is a, as good a place as any to, it's a really a, a new business item, but I might as well mention it here, uh, because you talk about on-site, off-site, and I know, I know what you mean by uh, off-site does not include anything in the building, including the common area, I suspect. Okay, and in, in terms of our parlance, but we do have a common area we have a right to use, that being the courtyard. Mm -hmm. Never mind, and the parking lots and all that stuff. Uh, uh, and I, I was uh, sitting and filling with my phone or something, looking at that courtyard. And a couple of folks on staff came by and said, "End of the beautiful day." They said, "Boy, we really should be doing something out there." And they're talking about the library. And then when we had a friends meeting, I said, "You know." Okay, so we, we have bake sales and stuff. We have the money, money, money. And what do we do with it? What can we do? Well, whether it be the library or the friends, there could be something uh, uh, to be done out there, whether it's just uh, uh, downtime, solitude, the carvers, or whatever, you know, something peaceful, mm -hmm. uh, something. I like the sunset dusk kind of warm weather thing where people can just 
tea spray, a cup of coffee out there, whatever. Mm -hmm. And okay, and I go and I look at that thing, and it, it's a mess. Yes. Uh, it's got well, all these weeds, and uh, nobody's taking care of it. So I said, well, why is that? So I went and looked at the lease. I asked Matt to access it. They, that's their responsibility. Yep. And uh, um, uh, you can even say, you know, you really ought to, it's a two for thing. I mean, you, you should say, you really should be doing what you're supposed to be doing there. Or we could say, you know, we wouldn't mind dealing with that. You might have a garden club or something that would like to do some work in there. And then you can do this for us. Something, you know, either right. way. Right. So I, I, I really think it'd be lovely. Uh, I mean, right now, really, from middle of spring, right to the middle of fall, I suppose, uh, to actually have that place in shape to do something uh, uh, charming and peaceful. So okay. that's, that's my story. All right. Okay. So any other notes for the for the team who did the draft action plan? I like it. I, like it. I really like it. Yeah, I lots of great ideas. It's... Obviously, everybody's learning this past year. Everybody gets it. Uh, it's not abstract anymore. Uh, you know, so you see these very tangible targets. Mm -hmm. and, uh, it's, it's a great strategy. The, the sustainability, of course, commitment to sustainability is always there even though it's not explicitly mentioned. Um, but uh, of course, in addition to work in areas where grant could help, right? That's an addition of the line. Is that something going to be part of the, like I didn't see a column for that separately, but we don't need that, you think? Well, I think that's the that's why they put it into the cover letter. Correct. <clears throat> that they, well, they to say that, can be done. that that's well, like another lens that's happening in all that work. They couldn't, it was a little hard to figure out how to explicitly put it in. Because you know, the feeling is, front, yeah. Because the feeling is still that there's some identification going on. So what what are those projects? What is grant worthy? Mm -hmm. So you have to remember that um, for the staff is we have not had a, a thinking of grants really at all. Okay. Mm -hmm. So, uh, and we talked about this, right, Fran, at our, our last meeting was that we've always just had an operating budget and we've just felt that that's what we have and that's that okay. so now to think that there's this that that we need to start to think that there's other add-ons other things that we can ask for other things to do is a new kind of thinking and i think that for right now to, for them to say and we will be thinking about this and i'll be there saying and you'll be thinking about it um is is the start for us um but I well, we we I brought it up. Could we have something explicit? And it just didn't feel right for them. Mm -hmm. And this is where they this is how they decided to address that for right. work. Because I put it down as a condition of this work that you needed to have something in there about, mm -hmm. it. about it. Okay. The only thing I can and just to bring it to them can be that you know some of the big companies I know that the um, for forest lab right we have over here. Mm -hmm. They kind of give out uh, nice grants to communities uh, as per so you know some of those big companies might be so that that's the only thing you can say that okay we approached two companies in a year because it's a year right, right? the big ones and we gave a presentation to whoever sits over there kind of this type of situation. They have found a lot of the big companies have foundations now they have different mm -hmm. missions. I know so, color. They have different targets. Uh, some of them are outside. I mean, if they if it's in public health, you're not going to be dealing with that particular. Uh, but they, you know, community uh, uh, enhancement, uh, yeah. student enhancement, kids at risk, whatever, you can make a case. And there are hundreds, if not thousands. Uh, and also there's government money. 
And I'm sure what board, Matt is saying, the board understands that. You know, this is something new for the staff and all of us to ponder around as to how to do that. Yeah. I mean, the first one you go to, which we've talked about uh, uh, several times, the Long Island Community Foundation, which right. is a, uh, a not for profit, uh, uh, basically, re gift. Mm -hmm. So, like, for instance, with, at the conversation that we had last week, it was, you know, this idea that it's got to be like really big right that was the staff's kind of first reaction to me bringing up the grants was it's got to be something like you know multi-year and giant no you're going to say but no and that's what i said it, not necessarily it can be also wouldn't it be great that we had a we want to build a makerspace not that we're saying we do or we don't but we want to add some technology to the library we could find something that could provide some of those pieces right it can right. it can be parts of something it can right. be it could be a lot of it could be anything really and some of them you, you don't only get half of the money the thing is going to cost that's right some of the grants. so the point was that what's on those lists how are you thinking that way that you we're having this budget what is the budget really then for and our grants going to help us do these other things so it's just changing the frame of thinking about about <laughs> getting stuff done here and that's where we're starting that's great because you get the process, the decision making process, and really, I, it starts with what do you really want to do? Exactly. That you don't want to put into your budget. Right. And we do have someone on staff, Krista, actually, who um, worked at uh, the Long Island Museum and was involved with a lot of granting and right. grant writing. She would, yeah. right? And I do a ton of it. So right. I know you do. But I'm saying we have so we have we have some know how. Right. There's this, some local knowledge. Some universe. Yep. And uh, that's going to be helpful because, you know, Chris is on staff and it's someone that the other staff can talk to and find out and she can help guide us a little bit as well. She's been through it a number right, of times. Right. So. Yeah, yeah. And it's a process. Yeah. It's not like just you go out and the people keep... Yeah, they just write the check. Yeah, never. Well, you can. Try it. Yeah. You can write it. Yeah, I can. Of course. I need so. an acoustic guitar over there now. <laughs> I'm borrowing the guitar, the electric guitar yeah. from the library. <laughs> Good. Yeah. Well, there's nothing against you approving this tonight, Steve. Mm. Approving. The approving what specifically? The action plan. The action plan. Oh. I mean, if you don't have any more comments or. I, I, I mean, that's, a, that's great to me. How does everyone else feel about that? I, I would move to you know, adopt the plan as written. Yeah. Okay, who's moving? You're moving. Second, all in favor. Oh, Aye. I, I was, I was actually uh, very impressed. With how much hard I would have liked on all this. five of us here for this. Mm. It is what it is. <laughs> well, again, oh, we're going to split their salary for this. <laughs> I'm not going to. I'm not pulling on any sword unless it's a rubber sword. <laughs> uh. That's that brings yeah. us any new business. Um, uh, public participation. We don't have any of that tonight. Nobody's on that again, right? Someday we have a personnel discussion, but that needs to be uh, dealt with in. Nope, we have a personnel report tonight. Well, I know, uh, and I've, we've never done that particular. I am that's Jackie's uh, uh, item, uh, so we can we can do that, and uh, uh, um, everybody here scanning that page recommendations on Jackie. The, the one that yeah, I saw that page earlier. Mm -hmm. uh, I'll wait for I I'll it. wait for the motion and and second, and we'll vote on that because it's perfectly fine. It's probably nearly the last page. Yeah. It's page number 63. Yep. We'll get a new tablet this year. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 
you having a hard time finding it? I got it. I got it. Oh, okay. It's just that one page. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> so what do you think? Yeah. Okay. Yep. That's what I'm waiting for. I'm waiting for a motion. Yeah, and motion to uh, appoint Jack. Motion. Can you second it? You I'll second it. Yeah. All in favor. All right. Okay. Aye. Now uh, we have to entertain a motion to go into. Right. See you. Thanks, Ryan. Executive Thank session. Executive session. Uh, move. Move. Seconded. Yeah. All in favor. All right. Aye. We are now in executive session. Not yet. Not yet. We're not. Well, you are technically on paper, but you're not technically technologically. Technologically. Oh. <laughs> I have to turn this off. Oh. Damn, Still a pub, right. right. Uh, no executive session oh, on YouTube. Right. That's my doable. <laughs> 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 it's got to be a remote.